We are so close to the finish line. There's just a few things that we're gonna tidy up and we're gonna call this rig done. Yay! So what are we gonna work on in this lesson? We are going to append in our rig UI script. That's the thing that I've mentioned a thousand times now. And that's gonna be a convenient way of displaying all our bone layers and our properties over here in the viewport rather than finding them hidden in the um, in Blender's UI. I'm also gonna show you a, a hack to get that UI script to follow along with our rig object if you append or link that into a new file. It's gonna automatically um, bring along this UI script. And we're gonna do the same thing with our automatic rotation driver script. Um, although when we link it in, it's not gonna work out of the box. I'll show you a little bit of a workaround to get it to work and then we can save it in that state. But I'll, I'll do that in a separate video. Okay. The other thing that we're gonna do in this video is just a few tidy up things. Uh, any loose ends that I've forgotten, we're gonna tidy it all up now and call this rig final. So let's get started. I'm going to split my window to bring up a text editor. So let's go vertical split and then change this to be a text editor. And included in the downloads, we are going to bring up our little scripts folder. You can see in the folder, scripts. Inside that folder, there is a, a Python file called monster truck rig UI. This is the UI that we're gonna drag in. So we're just gonna drag this in to our text editor here. And then we can say, bye bye file browser, I'm done with you. Okay, so while we're here, we are going to go to the text menu and we're going to click register. That way, as you know, this is going to run every time we open up the file and that's gonna save us from doing one thing. And also I want to make sure that we make this text internal. That way it's no longer linked to the outside file. It is local inside this blend file, which is what we want. Awesome. Now, while we're here, I'm also gonna hit the play button. It's not going to work just yet, but it will always be running. And when we fix things to make it work, it's automatically gonna start. So I'm going to hit play. The reason I did that is just so that I've done all the technical things in this um, text editor now before I forget. Let me give a quick brief overview of what is going on here. So uh, I'll explain this little variable um, in a moment, but we've technically got two parts to this script. This first part called rig layers, is just going to create a panel, just like these ones over here, that's going to display all of our bone layers that we want. So it's gonna create a button called uh, main and that's gonna to toggle on the bone layers over here on uh, index zero. This one is gonna to toggle on and off layer one, which is the second one. Axles is gonna be layer two. The floor is gonna be layer three and the root bone is gonna be layer 28. So you need to make sure that you put your bones on the right layers. If you put the main controls on index 11, you just need to make sure that this says index 11. But let me just return that back to what it should be for, for my file. And then I'll explain this little bit here. So the rig properties class, this is just a way of displaying all of those properties on the bones that we've created, all the custom properties that is, as well as our uh, material switch. So we also need to make sure that the bone names match exactly if you've spelt them dif differently or if you've used hyphens instead of underscores, you need to make sure that everything is going to match up, otherwise the script won't work. Okay, now back to the top. This script is only going to run when it finds this custom property called rig ID with the value monster truck on it. That's what this um, little poll section does here. It says, get this value on the active object, and if it is equal to a variable up here, then run this code. That way, it's only gonna display our UI when we have our monster truck rig selected. It's not gonna show it when we have a monkey head selected or a cube selected or a camera selected. Only when the active object has this property, this exact property. All right, so let's get about creating that so it's, um, it's going to work. We wanna create custom property. Remember, I still have our um, rig selected. We're gonna create that property on the data level, which for an armature is a green skeleton. And then we go down to the bottom. We're gonna expand custom properties and click new. And now we're gonna do click on the cog to change this. And we're gonna change this over from float over to string. And that's just a fancy way of saying text because we need it to be a text property. So the property name needs to match what we have here. Whoops, so the rig ID. Let me just bring that up again. 
So the property name needs to be rig underscore ID, all spelled correctly. And the default value needs to be our text up here, monster truck, spelled exactly the same. Let's do that, monster truck. We are not going to worry about the description because it's going to say rig ID and that's superfluous. So I'm going to click OK and it's not going to work just yet. And this is a quirk with Blender. We've changed that property to be from a float over to a string. But when we did that, there was no way of changing the current value, only the default value. And the current value was set at 1.0. So technically this 1.0 that's in here is still 1.0, but it is no longer a number. It is a string. So we either need to type monster truck in here, or we can reset it to the default value and then it will start working. So what's the easiest way to reset it? If I right click in here, you can see the shortcut for reset to default value is backspace. That's what I'm gonna press. I'm gonna hover and hit backspace and you can see that it returned to the default value. I don't know why you have to do that, but you just do. But you'll notice over here, let me drag this over, our rig layers and all of our properties are showing. So here we go, we can turn our bones on and off and we can control our floor suspensions and, and everything. Let's stretch these down. That has got our UI um, working. Awesome. All right, let me just return my car back to default. And uh, now I want to show you the little bit of a hack to get that script, this one that we've just imported here, to automatically attach and stick to this rig so that when we append it in, it's going to follow along. So I'm going to uh, just change our window here. I'm, I'm done with my window, but I'm going to change this over to be a Python console. We just need to run a one line of code in our console here. And this is the only way that I know how to do it. So included in the downloads, I'll bring this up again. We have an, a, a text file, attach UI to automatically append. I'm going to open this up and it's opened up on this window over here. Uh, let me get rid of that one. And you can see uh, I've left it as text so you can copy and paste it. But this just says, attach the rig to UI, copy and paste this into the Blender console and make sure that you run it. Now there's two lines. Um, we wanna do it one at a time. So I'm gonna copy this line of code by selecting it, I'm going to copy. And then over here, I'm going to paste it into my console here. And what it's going to do is it's just gonna create a property on the object and it's gonna attach this rig file, data text monster truck rig UI. So if you want to use this script in the future, you can. Um, and what you can do is just actually delete this section and use autocomplete. If I hit tab, it's going to give me options of um, what I can complete it with. And I'm just going to choose the monster truck rig UI. So there we go. M, oops, M O N, monster truck rig. Now, when I push enter, it's gone to the next line, there's no errors. What that has done, if I jump over here to the objects tab, down the bottom, it has created this property called UI script and there's this little grayed out area here. Now at the moment, this is the only way you can connect text files to, to follow along that I'm aware of. We're gonna do the same thing with um, our auto rotate script, but we don't, we wanna make sure that we don't give it the same property name. It can't be called UI script, otherwise it's gonna overwrite what we've just created there. So I'm going to copy this one here, which I've already prepared earlier. Copy that and just paste this one in here. Remember, it's going to create a new custom property called auto rotate script and it's going to attach that auto rotate Python file to, to this object. So I can hit enter and you'll see here. Now we got auto rotate, and that's the script there, and UI script, that's our script there. But as I said earlier, when we append in our um, auto rotate drivers aren't going to work out of the box i'll cover that in the next video let me close this down i can get rid of our um, console and let's do some final cleanup so the few final touches that we're going to work on um, i don't think it's a really good idea to leave the floor stretch set to one in the default state because the someone's going to grab this and go why are my wheels sticking to the ground so we're going to change that so that is our floor stretch properties. Now there's a couple of different ways that we can change it. I'll show you the long way and then I'll show you the short way. So on each of our wheels, this is what I'm, I'm talking about our floor stretch here. So I'm gonna go down to our properties and I wanna change the default value. I'm gonna click on the cog. 
and you can see that our default value at the moment is set to one. I want to change that to zero and then I click OK. And now when I return this value to the default by hitting backspace, it's going to be um, the default value of, of zero, which is makes more sense than having it at one. So that was the long way of, of doing it on the cog down here. There's actually a shorter way. We can do it from up here. Let's just change this full stretch to be zero. And then I can right click and say, assign value as default. And that was the same as clicking into the cog and, and changing it there. That was much faster. We can also do that from the UI. So if we go down here to our floor stretch, this is the back left. I can set this to be zero and I'll set this one to be zero as well because I'll just do both of them at the same time. Floor stretch I'm talking about here. I can go right click, assign value as default, right click, assign value as default. So now when the animator grabs this and moves it around, it's going to push through the ground, but not stretch. This is a more logical state to leave the rig in when the, when someone opens up the file. Well, actually not floating in the air. We'll return it to the middle. That's a more logical state to leave it in. So uh, any other tidy up things? Oh, I'm gonna move my head so that you can um, see the outline here. Earlier, I wasn't sure whether I was gonna add anything else to this utils collection, but the only thing that we've got in here is the ground. So I will rename this utilities collection to be ground using capital letters. So when it's closed, we can see, see what's what. That's a nice thing to do. Another thing that some people like to do um, is to include this object in the master collection so it's easier to find rather than having to dig into um, a further collection. So we can actually place this in two spots at once. So let me show you how to do that. Um, I will click on this, the object tab here and then go down to collections and you can see, oh, I need to be in object mode for this to become active. I can say add to collection and then choose the monster truck collection. So it's now in both. And you see it appears in both spots in, in our outliner. So that way, if this is closed, then the animator can easily find it and they don't have to dig through. That's personal preference. Uh, personally, I don't do that, but that might be something that you like to do. Or you could even um, remove this whole collection. So delete the collection, whoops, uh, delete. That's one thing that you might do. I'm just gonna undo that last step. And as the very last thing that you should do when this rig is um, final is we can make anything that we don't want the animator to select, we can make that unselectable. So at the moment I can select everything and if I'm trying to animate this, I'm trying to grab the bone, the mesh is gonna get in my way. So what I'm gonna do is turn on our filters up here and enable this one here. And then if I disable it on our whole collection, now the animator can't select that geometry. We can do the same thing on our ground object by disabling the selection on our uh, whole collection. But you wanna make sure that you do that as the last step. So it's not annoying for you as the rigger to always have to turn it back on again when you need to select something. And that folks is the end. You have made it to the end, you've finished your rig. It's time to save this as your final version. So I'm gonna jump over to the uh, material view. I, I wanna leave it on the flames because I think the flames is cooler than the monster uh, paint job. Look at that, Brr, pretty cool. Uh, so I'm also going to save it in, in a cool view, something like that. Yep, that will do. You can delete the helpers if you like. We have our selection turned off, it looks good. So we're gonna go file, save as, and we've been incrementally saving this whole time with you know, version one, two, three, or whatever. It's time to create a master version and just by uh, deleting the, uh, the numbers. So monster truck rig, we know that this is our final version. Hit enter, save as, and now you go and make yourself a cup of tea and you enjoy. Well done you, well done.